Hello, my name is Laura Pizzorno. I'm the author of Your Bones, and today I'd like to share with you some information that I hope will help you to have healthier bones. I'd like to talk to you today about calcium bioavailability. You hear a lot about it um, in the marketing for various forms of calcium, but does it really differ among various types of calcium? Actually, the answer is no. Many papers have clearly demonstrated that the various forms of calcium are all comparably bioavailable when calcium supplements are taken with a meal or even with a snack. The reason for this is that most forms of calcium require an acidic environment in the stomach to be what is called solubilized, which simply means that the elemental calcium is disassociated from its carrier molecule so that it's ready to be absorbed. When we eat a meal or a snack, our stomachs automatically secrete hydrochloric acid so we can digest our food and solubilize the minerals within it or in the supplements that we take. You may have heard that calcium citrate was more bioavailable than other forms of calcium. Well, it's simply not true. What is true is that the calcium will disassociate from citrate even if no stomach acid is present, but once removed from its binding carrier molecule, all forms of calcium are equally well absorbed. Where did this myth that calcium citrate was more bioavailable originate? It actually dates back to a single study that was conducted in 1985 in which calcium citrate was found to be better absorbed than calcium carbonate under fasting conditions in 11 elderly subjects who were achlorhydric, which meant they did not produce stomach acid. What is not reported in the findings of this 1985 study is that when these elderly subjects who weren't producing stomach acid uh, when fasting were given their calcium supplements along with breakfast, the calcium was well absorbed and calcium citrate was no more bioavailable than any other form of calcium. To quote from this paper, quote, administration of calcium carbonate as part of a normal breakfast resulted in completely normal absorption even in achlorhydric subjects. These results indicate that calcium absorption is impaired in achlorhydria under fasting conditions. And that is all that the results indicate. They do not indicate that calcium citrate is magically more bioavailable than other forms of calcium. And more recent studies have confirmed this. Uh, the 1985 study was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Um, I'll provide the citations for these comments uh, so if you want to look at it. More recent studies that have confirmed this are, uh, include a study in the Journal of the American College of Nutrition that was published in 2001 that looked at the bioavailability of various forms of calcium in 24 postmenopausal women, and it found that uh, all forms that they tested produced identical 24-hour time increases in blood levels of calcium. In other words, calcium from any of the calcium sources was equally well absorbed and had e equivalent bioavailability. In yet another study that was conducted in 2002 and published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, Researchers tested elderly subjects, and they found that calcium was equally bioavailable from skim milk, calcium carbonate, and orange juice fortified with calcium citrate. Again, it did not make a difference. And what's the point here? Well, with very few exceptions, which we'll talk about in the next study, um, ca calcium bioavailability is just not an issue. It's a marketing issue, but not a health issue for you. So in the next uh, video, I will talk to you about the few times when there might be an exception when you should be talking to your doctor about which form of calcium supplement to take. I hope this is helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.